before we start programming all the features in IntelliJ. Remember, you have to have an API documentation ready before we start a single line of code. Since we learned REST API, and this time we're going to write a REST API's documentation. There is an awesome editor called Swagger. It is for API documentation. So here is a snapshot. Let's go to a online Swagger editor, and let me show you the REST APIs I defined for this project. So here we are. In Swagger, you are programming in a notation called YAML, Y-A-M-L. So on the left side is the YAML notation, and the right side is a rendering of this YAML file. Okay, so for you guys, make sure you only read the right side. When you want to edit APIs, you're going to use the left side. So you can think of this as the source code, and this is the view that based on this source code. Okay. So our first module is artifacts. As you can see in artifacts, we have find all artifacts. We have find one artifact by ID. We have add a new artifact. We have update an existing artifact and delete artifact by ID. Okay. So here is the HTTP method, and this is the endpoint. Okay. And together, this is a REST API. If I click it, as you can see here, in order to use this API, the client does not have to provide any parameter. Just use forward slash artifacts and make your HTTP method get. That's okay. And the server will respond like this. And here is an example. Flag is true. 200 is a HTTP response code. It means success. And here's message, find all success. And here is the data. The data has a list of artifacts that are currently in our database. So for example, we have a deluminator. We have invisibility cloak. We have a wand. We have a map. And we have sword, and so on and so forth, and stone here. OK, let me collapse this. Now, what if you want to add a new artifact? Now, this is a post even though the endpoint is the same as the first one, but there are two APIs because they have two different HTTP verbs. In this case, the client needs to submit some parameters in this format. So this is JSON, key value or name value pair. Let's say we're adding a new artifact called Deluminator. Name, description, and image URL. And you do not have to include ID. The ID will be assigned by database. OK, then one server successfully process this API. Here is a response from the server. Flag is true, code is 200, and the message is save success. As you can see, we only use JSON to exchange data, to post data, and to receive data. Everything is JSON. I have included a link to this file under this video. So feel free to download the file and import it into this online Swagger editor and read the documentation. Remember, an API documentation must be done before you start writing a single line of code. OK, let me collapse this. Here are the features in Wizards. As you can see, besides CRUD, and this one is how we assign an artifact to a wizard. So wizards, the first path variable is wizard ID. The second path variable is the artifact ID. So we're going to assign this artifact to this wizard. And this is the endpoint for this feature. OK, so if I click it. As you can see, in the parameter, we got two parameters. They are both path, okay? They're both path variables. And here's a response. Artifact assignment success. The last module contains six APIs. Get, post, put, get, delete. So those correspond to CRUD, right? They were similar to artifacts and wizards. The last one is login. 
Okay, so here to make things easier, I used a form login. Okay, so those are form data. So we're providing username and password. We're going to talk about this when we learn Spring Security. In the end, there are some models. Now remember, on the back end, we have to define those models to hold those data. For example, we have a model for artifact, we have a model for wizard, we have a model for user. Okay, now those are the important ones. Okay, I have included a link to this YAML file under this video. Feel free to download the YAML file and import it in this online Swagger editor. Okay, import file, and you will see what I see here. Remember, an API documentation must be done before you start writing a single line of code.